In question number two, we are talking about Jada rolling a standard number cube and then rolling it again. So I've put the sample space here of all the outcomes of rolling two die to help us with these questions. So number or part A says, what's the probability that she rolls a five on both cubes? So look for a five on both cubes. That's one out of the 36 options. So that would be the probability. B says, what's the probability that the second roll is a five under the condition? Okay, so under the, con let me change colors here. Under the condition that we know the first roll is a six. So this is gonna reduce our sample space. So we are going to already know that the first roll was a six, okay? So we're down to here, we're, we're reduced to these numbers. So none of these matter. And so what is the probability that the second roll is a five? So this is one out of six options. So when we know a condition has happened, that reduces our sample space of um, events. All right, so let me reset this. And whoops. What is the probability that the second roll is a five under the condition that the first roll is also a five? So now again, we're reducing the sample space. So now we know that the first roll was a five. So we're in these six options. So what's the probability that the second roll is gonna be a five? So this would be one out of six as well. All right, part D, what is the probability that the second roll is not a five? So we do not want the second roll to be a five. And so let's look at how many are fives and that will help us figure out how many are not fives. So here's our second roll fives. So there are six items in that one. And that means that there are 36 other, or sorry, 30 other options that are not fives. Okay, because there's 36 total, six of them have the second one as a five. So 30 out of 36 do not have the second roll as a five. Part E, what is the probability that the first roll is a five and the second roll is not a five? So we want the first roll to be a five. So here's all the first roll fives. And then we want the second roll to not be a five. So this would be good. This would be good. This would be good. This would be good. And this would be good. So now we have five options out of 36 because this one just said first roll is a five and the second roll is not a five. It didn't give us a condition. All right, number two, there are four slices of pizza left to choose from. Each slice of pizza has one topping. Three of the slices have sausage on them. So I'll just draw three slices of pizza with sausage on them. And then one slice has pepperoni on it. Kieran randomly selects one slice and then my randomly selects a slice. What is the probability that my selects a slice of pepperoni under the condition that Kyron already selected sausage? So we know that Kyron has already taken one of the sausage pizzas. So now what is the chance that my selects this pepperoni? So that's gonna be one out of three since we already know one of the sausage pizzas has been taken. All right, number three says Han's soccer team played a soccer game in the morning. Lynn's soccer team played a soccer game in the afternoon against a different team than Han's played. Let A represent the event that um, Han's soccer team wins their morning game. And let B represent the event that Lynn's soccer team wins in the afternoon. So let's um, write out what is the probability of B under the condition of A. 
So I'm going to type this out. So let me get this started here. All right, so what this is going to mean is that we know that the B event has happened, which is Lynn's. So we know um, what's the probability that Lynn's soccer team wins their afternoon game give, um, under the condition that Han's soccer team won the morning game. And so do we think that A and B are independent events? Yeah, they're playing different teams. So whether Han wins or loses should have no impact on whether Lynn's team wins or loses. And so if that's true that they are independent, what is that going to mean about the probability of B given A versus just the probability of B happening? So remember, this is the probability that Lynn wins given that we already know Han wins. And if those have no bearing on each other, then the probability that Lynn wins should match this. So they should be equal. Number four, the, each of the letters A through F, so let me write those out, are written on slips of paper and placed in a hat. Priya selects a slip of paper at random and then replaces it. Noah selects a slip of paper at random after that. So this is going to be important that Priya replaces her letter. So what is the probability that Priya selects the A? So that's going to be one out of six choices. So we see six letters. One of them is an A. She takes it, puts it back in the bag. So what's the probability that Noah selects the A? So this is, again, he has a one in six chance because he has the exact same letters. What's the probability that both Priya and Noah select the paper? So if we think about the sample space, so the first selection had A, B, C, D, E, F. And if we kind of think about doing a table, we would have those options again. So we can imagine that this sample space had 36 different options to happen only one of them is going to contain the two A's. So there's a one in 36 chance that they would both select the A. Are the events of Priya and Noah selecting the paper independent or dependent? So this is going to be independent. And you would know this for a couple of reasons because they replace the paper. So it has no impact on the probability. And you can see that the probabilities are the same. Number five, the Wildcats have won approximately 80% 80, 80 of their 20 basketball games this season. The Wildcats won five of the eight games they played when Elena started the game. Are the events the Wildcats win, so the probability of the Wildcats win, and the probability that the Wildcats win under the condition that Elena starts the game dependent or independent? So if these are independent, the probabilities will be the same. If they're dependent, they'll be different. So we see that the probability that they win is 80%. And then we see that the probability that they win, given Elena is starting, is 5 out of 8, which if we figure out that percent, the decimal is 0.265. So the percent is 62.5%. So since these two probabilities do not equal each other, that means that these events are dependent. That Elena starting does impact whether or not they win. Number six, in a genetics experiment on plants, 17% of plants exhibit trait A, 22% of plants have trait B, 36% of the traits or the plants exhibit trait A or B. So what percent are going to have A and B? So this is the counting principle that the probability of event A or B is going to equal the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both of them. 
And so we see that the probability of A is 17%. And we see that the probability of trait B is 22%. And then we see that the probability of A or B is 36%. So what is the probability of A and B to make sure that these sides balance out? So we have 36%. And if we do 17 plus 22, that's 39% minus the probability of A and B. So 39% minus what would give us 36%? So that's, um, we can tell that this needs to be 3% in order for these sides to balance. So the probability of A and B happening at this, or the plant exhibiting both traits is 3%. And then number seven says that we have 70 students were asked two survey, survey questions. Do you play a sport? Are you a member of the choir? And then they summarized those findings in this Venn diagram. So how many students play a sport? So we can see in this sport bubble here that we've got 18 and 11. So 29 total students play a sport. How many students are, um, how many students play a sport or are in the choir? So we have those sports and we have 24. So we have 18 plus 11 plus 24, and that gives us a total of 46, no, of 53. How many students play a sport and are members of the choir? Okay, so these 11 in the middle are the overlap. So 11 students are in both a sport and the choir. How many students are not a member of the choir? So we've got tw um, anybody that's not inside of this bubble. So these people and these people are not part of the school choir. So 18 and 17, which is going to be 35. And then name two ways that you can figure out how many people play a sport. So we did in this first one where we took 18 plus 11, and that gave us 29. The other option is we could take the total student surveyed, which is 70, and we could subtract the people who are in choir and the people who are not in anything, and then the leftover would also be the number in sport.